Brutal Doom is one of, if not the most emblematic mod for Doom ever conceived. Created in 2010, it quickly became very popular within the Doom community and won the first ever CAC award for a Doom mod in 2011. Also, it is the go-to mod for players that still play classic Doom to this day. The impact this mod has had on the Doom community and the overall video game industry cannot and should not be understated. Shortly after it was released, it was spreading like wildfire. Everyone was saying that it's just Doom but more brutal. Even John Romero, one of the co-creators of Mother f***ing Doom, gave the mod its blessing, stating that if Brutal Doom came out in 1993 instead of Doom, it would've destroyed the video game industry. What? Even after 13 years of being released, people are still playing it, talking about it, making videos about it, and it's still being constantly updated. You might think that this mod is the second and third coming of Jesus Christ, and that the mod is loved by everyone. That couldn't be further from reality. Even if Brutal Doom is absolutely fantastic, its development has seen a lot of controversy, and it all boils down to its creator, Marcos Avenante, better known as Sergeant Mark IV. In today's video, we're going to take a look into the infamous Brutal Doom, its dark history, and see why a lot of people hate its creator, Sergeant Mark IV, so much. Real quick, my friends, um, YouTube doesn't like Brutal Doom like at all, so please leave a like. Me and my sanity would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. So grab your super shotgun, give the demons the middle finger, and let's dive straight into hell. This video was brought to you by Gamersubs and its brand new flavor, New Lemonade. If you purchase this flavor, you will get this exclusive shaker cup for free, while stock lasts. So if this is your gig, use code MIDNIGHT to get 10% of your order as well. Thank you so much for the support and I really hope you enjoy. But Midnight, what is Brutal Doom? I hear you asking in the distance. Brutal Doom is a mod for classic Doom that adds numerous improvements to its gameplay and graphical fidelity. This mod has more blood, more gore, more weapons to choose from, new mechanics for the demons, new particle effects that enhances the gore even more, drivable vehicles, headshot multipliers, Mortal Kombat-like fatalities or glory kills, etc. Brutal Doom is a fantastic experience and I recommend that every fan of Doom should definitely check it out. Just do it. Even though there's some people that think Brutal Doom shouldn't even be considered a Doom game or a Doom mod, they are definitely the minority in my sincere opinion, as the experience Brutal Doom offers is, without a shadow of a doubt, true to the original game, which is all about killing big demons with big fucking guns with a badass soundtrack blasting in the background. That is correct. But, even if the game is utterly brilliant, its legacy and development has seen its fair share of controversies. Some are tame, others can be somewhat dark, and others Others are quite frankly very disturbing and fucked up. Before I continue onwards, let me clarify something. I do not condone the harassment of anyone mentioned in this video in any way. If you partake in that kind of activity, please, with all due respect, grow up. It's simply not worth it. With that being said, let's continue. Brutal Doom was created by Marcos Avenante, which goes by the alias of Sergeant Mark IV on social media. Sergeant is nothing but a genius. Brutal Doom is just that good of a mod. The amount of work, thought, and passion that has been put into this project should not be understated. Yet, right after the huge success this mod had on mainstream media, Sergeant began to show his ego. Whenever anyone criticized Brutal Doom, whether with good intentions or not, Sergeant would often reproach those criticisms by stating that those people are just jealous of him, which is not something good to do if I had to be honest. Sergeant has also been accused 
accused for stealing the work of other mothers to put into his mod and outright denied to give proper credit. You may not know, but Brutal Doom was not entirely created by Sargent, as it is, in fact, a huge compilation of dozens of mods compiled together to form a singular experience. While I was searching for proof that he indeed stole people's work without giving credit, I found evidence that stated otherwise. But because all of this happened in the early 2010s, it's pretty hard to know the truth. So I don't really know. But as time went on, Sargent's statements became more and more unhinged. In 2012, Sargent was working on version 16 for Brutal Doom. He wanted to make the mod feel more impactful, so what he did was to add real gore from real dead bodies to the mod. In quotes, Today I decided to take the gore of Brutal Doom to a whole new level. Through these two years of development, some Gibbs sprites from Nash gore still remained, so I decided to make whole new sprites to replace them. Where to find the material, you may ask? Making fake wax pieces of gore and taking pics of it myself? No but searching the internet for real gore and trying to turn pieces of these pictures of real dead people into sprites. He then proceeded to describe exactly what type of body part he was using as reference. How can you do this? This is outrageous. The community didn't take this lightly at all, as a lot of people thought that using real gore to create sprites for a video game was just too much and going way too far. I disagree with that. I despise gore. I do not consume it and never will because I hate it. Yet, I do love some good old gore on video games because it's fiction, such as this game right here. Dead Space is one of the most violent video games ever created. The gore on that game is sure to make your mom ground you for life. Believe me, there's this video from Ars Technica where they interview Glenn Schofield, the creator of Dead Space. I extremely recommend that you watch this video, as it gives you a good insight as to how games like Dead Space are created, link down below. Anyhow, in this video Glenn explains how his art department created the necromorphs. In order to give these cosmic horror monsters their- <coughs> In order to give this cosmic horror monsters their vile look, the artists from Visceral Studios dove into very graphic imagery of car accidents. The pictures were so intense and so explicit that some of the employees were unable to sleep at night for the next couple of weeks as this part of the project proceeded and ended. And well, I know that the creators of Dead Space are not the first and only developers that have done that. Real life inspires art, and if you want to create something as graphic as the necromorphs or doom sprites, you have to be able to digest watching and analyzing those kinds of pictures. So I do not really believe Sargent was wrong for doing this, it's just part of the job. However, the same thing cannot be said about this. In February of 2013, a user by the name of Zero X Diamond posted this on 4chan. This is 4chan, right? I have no idea help me. So hey, Mark, buddy, would you mind telling me what in the name of Christ this is doing at the beginning of the Gore 3 lump? Watch how the plasma magic can instantly turn an average white guy into a burger faster than rap. Of course, this was written into the code of the game by Sargent himself, and it doesn't stop there. A few months later, on September of 2013, someone posted something on 4chan that alluded to the idea that he simply didn't want to live in this world anymore, and that he wanted to know how to finally rest in peace. And well, Sargent just went ahead and gave him a link on how to create something to achieve this goal. Thanks to this, as of the recording of this video and almost 10 years later since this happened, Sargent is banned from posting on the Sea Doom and Sandronum forums indefinitely, which are pretty popular places to be around if you like 
to indulge yourself in some doom talk. But wait, there's more. Besides Brutal Doom, there's another mod for Doom that has gained quite a reputation, that being Painkiller's Project Brutality. Now, I really have no idea what was the relationship between Sergeant and Painkiller in the beginning, but what I could gather from the internet, it seems that these two mods have had their differences for quite some time. In quotes, I regret to say that I will no longer be in contact with Sergeant Mark IV. After examining the decompiled ACS code for his latest public version of Extermination Day, it was found that it contained malicious code intended to crash GC Doom and possibly a user's entire computer if Extermination Day was ran alongside Project Brutality. Fortunately, I was able to remove the hack and will provide a walkthrough for users wanting to play the latest Extermination Day with Project Brutality. I am not looking for any further conflict with Sergeant Mark IV, as I wish the best of luck for Brutal Doom, but I am moving from this drama for good. For context, Extermination Day is a mod for Doom that was also created by Sergeant Mark IV. In the installation folder of the mod, Sergeant specifically stated that this mod only worked with the recent build of Brutal Doom, which was version 21. And being that Brutal Doom and Project Brutality have had their differences in the past, Sergeant did write a code that will crash your game if Extermination Day was ran alongside Project Brutality instead of Brutal Doom as instructed. However, Sergeant did state on his Patreon page that it was all meant to be a troll for the people that prefer to run the modern software not intended for it. Also, it was stated by several people from the Doom forums that Painkiller was outright making all of this up. That yes, running Extermination Day with Project Brutality will crash your game, but it didn't went as far as causing permanent damage to your system. And sometime later, Sergeant did make Extermination Day compatible with Project Brutality, so I think that's a win. I guess. Any posts related to Project Brutality are now prohibited in any sub-channels. Moderators should delete any discussion about it on site. Project Brutality is entirely made of stolen material from Brutal Doom and other mods. The dev keeps fueling hatred against me on their Discord, and I will no longer tolerate his infantile fanbase starting up shit here. Now, it's time for my hot take, so be ready. The name Sergeant Mark IV is very polarizing within the Doom modding community and in the community in general. Some people love the man and some people absolutely despise the man. But if I have noticed anything while researching this subject, is that a lot of people seem to live in the past. Whenever the name Sergeant Mark IV or Brutal Doom appears on any thread, a lot of users are quick to point out why the mod sucks and why Sergeant is a horrible human being for things that happened years and years and years ago. And look, I'm not saying that the things that Sergeant did in 2013 are cool. Of course not. Dropping the big word that YouTube <coughs> dropping the big word that YouTube hates a lot like nothing, linking a depressed person away to do what he wants to do, letting his ego go over his head thanks to the success of his mod, those are things no one should be proud of. Yet, thing is that Sergeant has apologized for everything in the past numerous times, and I believe everyone deserves a second chance if they really want to change. I mean, let's be completely honest guys, who wasn't an edgy piece of crap when we were young? Puberty man, puberty. In puberty we do stupid stuff because we didn't know any better. It's part of growing up. Also, I noticed that a lot of people blew out a lot of things Sergeant did out of proportion. For example, being called a sociopath and a psychopath for using real gore to create the gifts for his mod, which I think is a huge stretch. By that definition, anyone who has worked on a violent video game or film should also be considered a sociopath and psychopath. For some reason, a lot of people have been pushing this narrative that Sergeant is the leader of a neo-Nazi cult in Brazil. When I first saw that, I tried to search for evidence that supported this claim, and the only thing I could find was the description of his 4chan profile. In quotes, location, United Communist Nazi Republic Dictatorship of Banana Land. If you believe that this description in any way 
confirms that Sergeant is a neo-Nazi. Con todo respeto, amigo, estás equivocado. Y aparte estás pero bien wey This is very clearly a troll It's not that deep bro Also there's this post on reddit that just makes no sense at all In quotes I hate to bring the subject of Columbine Because there has always been this weird connection between those two kids And things like video game violence and heavy metal music Which I feel is unjustified and stupid I agree with you Nice But it's hard to ignore the similarities between Sergeant Mark IV and Eric Harris. Huh? Both of them were a bit fans of Doom and created modifications for Doom that added more gore to the game. Both of them were known for going on insane rants about graphic violence in extreme detail, with an unsettling amount of excitement about the subject, and both of them were known for being anti-Semites and Nazi sympathizers and misanthropes in general. The only difference being that one shot up a school and the other hasn't. At least not yet. No mames. Like I said before, what he said and did in the past wasn't cool. Not at all. It was very toxic. But going as far as saying Sergeant is just another version of Eric Harris just sounds very weird to me. It seems that some people like to go out of their way to paint Sergeant as the literal Antichrist. And I also do not find that cool. Not at all. This is just a huge exaggeration to be fair. Like I said earlier, if someone is trying to better themselves and correct the wrongdoings from their past, I believe that person deserves a second chance. Also, for the people that still cling to the thing Sergeant Seth 10 years ago, I think it's time to let go. Everyone makes mistakes, we are all human after all, and our goal is to better ourselves every single day. That is the whole point of life itself. I've been checking on Sergeant socials for a while now, and I think he's a cool dude. He's very straightforwardly intense most of the times, and I think that's why some people think he's an asshole. But but I think that's just Brazil running in his veins, which I understand. I am Mexican after all. A la verga me vale verga. But anyways, my friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos, be sure to check my Doomsturbing series. I recently did an episode on my house. What? If you haven't checked that video, I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. Have a fantastic weekend, my friends. Stay safe. Adios. Bye. Hey guys, it's the beautiful patrons time again. Huge thank you to TP Ryan, Leon Hunter 743, Kyle W, M Dama, Nata Real Nam, Neuralic Bear, Saint Overkill, Andy Gonzalez, Dan the Man, Aaron Warren, Nick Irving, Romney Hasagawa, Frank Soros, Jordan Willingham, Cody D. Loner, Jaku Fumu, Elijah Riley, Kuru Kenshi, Megaton, George, Unknown User Zero, Osombra, and Florian Hablo. Thank you so much for your support. I love you so much.